as I'm talking here, uh, I got me a buddy there, Alyssa, recording on the other end, and apparently the audio is going pretty rotten on this uh, on this radio. Sideband so base station, it's uh, all distorted. He's recording his, on his end. Receive uh, gets bad as well as transmit, and uh, what it is, the heat sink in the center of the radio is getting mad hot, overheating other components. Uh, how about you? One, two, three. And you can get and you hear all that distortion, do you? So what I'll do now is I'll change the mode switch to AM, key it up. All right, come back there now. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. You're done, yeah. So again, what I did, I took the mode switch, uh, switched her to AM, keyed up for a second, put her back on lower side band, and all distortion clears up. Okay. Going to be switching. I think uh, I'm, I'm going to move the uh, the current amp and the voltage regulator off of that heat sink. I think. Yeah, I've got two heat sinks uh, on the side now. I'm back at the uh, I'm back at the uh, audio amp. The audio amp's over there, and I got two heat sinks put on that extra. But uh, yeah, she's getting mad hot, man. A lot of takers. I want her to go completely uh, bad. Yeah, send her again there now, if you don't mind. So here we have it. We have a Cherokee CBS 1000. Uh, it has a overheating issue on this heatsink. It's like too hot to touch. It's like mad hot. Whoa. Because what you have here, you have the audio amplifier here. A voltage regulator there. I'm assuming there's a current amp before already got here. And then they've got the uh, bridge rectifier there. It's all on the same heatsink. And uh, it gets heat hot, really hot, right here. Right along there. Right there's not so bad there now because I got these heat sinks here put in. But even then, even those are getting hot now. At least now they. But these heat sinks, at least the heat is, you know, dissipating a little bit. So, what I'm planning on doing is moving these two, or at least a big one. And uh, I'm going to take it from there, and I'm going to move it to another part of the radio. Um, probably back here. Maybe here. I don't know. I don't think of a good spot I can mount that. As well as the other voltage regulator. I can't use the radio. Well, I can use the radio, but she's heavily gets distorted because she overheats. So I got to come up with a solution for that. And before anybody loses their minds, this radio is not modified at all. And uh, I'll see if I can prove that. Because there is. There, I should say. 
Oh, I have the air modified, not modified, but I changed bands on this thing. If it was modified, so basically what you had to do was turn off that right, turn off the radio, and you had to press the number one button here, over here, and turn her on, and the screen would go blank. But as you can see, she don't go blank. This radio is not modified. So, before you lose your minds, she's not modified, and she never has been, nor will she ever will be. So the purpose of what I'm going to do with this Cherokee is I got to try to figure out this heating problem. Because this one heat sink is not enough to compensate for the, most, for the amount of heat that these components here are generating. It's unbelievable. So that's what the next video is going to be about, folks. See if we can uh, do something with the heat dissipation on this radio. Because this heat sink is just not cutting it. Whoa, that is hot. That is hot. Whoa. Hot there. Whoa. So hot. On a normal operation, I don't see how a heat sink should get that hot. That's crazy. Anyways, if you're interested in staying tuned on this uh, repair, stay tuned. I'll uh, put a few more videos on this one, or about this, and uh, see if we can't straighten her out. Okay, I am recording. Yeah, I got you tuned in there. Uh, I got you tuned in on uh, 27255.0. Maybe 27255.0. Anyway, I, I got you tuned in there a lot clearer than it was before. Um, just come back. Uh, big time distortion. It's probably the worst I've, worst I've heard you so far tonight. You're cleared or now? Just come back, give me a count, so I'll tune you in. Again. I got you 27 decimal 2550, almost a 1, a 1, and you're right in between. It flickers back and forth sometimes. Okay guys, it's Cherokee, CBS 1000 again. So what I've done, I've moved the, uh, the major transistor here, that's causing all the heat. Um, because everything was on this heat sink, and it went all across to the regulator, to the audio amp, um, to the rectifier. It's, I took, basically I took this transistor out. And the monitor back here on the back panel with its own outside heatsink to dissipate the heat. Transistor is getting warm. I don't know why that transistor is so warm. It's like it's too hot to touch. It doesn't make sense why a transistor would be that hot. SB778.
So I've got to, let this heat sink is getting warm, and that's where I want it to put it on the outside of the uh, radio. And the air can actually get at it. Because so inside the case, it's not even warm at all, not even lukewarm. So, yep, that was the plan. And so far, I think it's uh, working out. Um, and this unit was AC powered only. And the AC power supply is giving some kind of grief. And uh, that is, I'm having trouble to track down. So, for right now, what I'm planning on doing is adding a external DC source so we can run the radio on battery so yeah that's the plan so just uh, trim out the hole here to put this uh, three pin power connector you see this on back of just, ev just about every single CB radio and uh, so we're going to transplant that here Get a couple of screws now to hold her in place, and then wire it to the, uh, to the radio on the inside. Um, this radio also has a major overheating issue as well. Um, had to come and move the power transistor to uh, right there, and then put a heat sink on back of the radio to compensate for the heat that thing is making. But uh, she has a pretty good whine on receiving transmits for some reason. And it's something to do with the power supply here. I don't know what exactly. But uh, still working on that. So I said, what the heck. Uh, I said I tried to run DC external power supply and the noise was gone. So it is the uh, power supply circuit here that's causing the grief. So I said, figured until I get that fixed because I still want to use the radio. Uh, so I put my own DC DC line in here. So yeah, I put that there. I got to put a fuse in there, and then I got to have a switch because you got to be able to switch from AC power to DC power. And basically, all I'm gonna be doing there, you got one red wire over here. It just a matter of just removing that one and run it to the switch and the wire back again. And uh, I'll show you how that's done now in a bit. But so I'm just going to mount the, uh, the power plug here in the back of the radio and uh, try to run the DC power. Alright, guys, so I got the DC jack mounted and I got the AC DC switch. Uh, so you switch that up to run her on external DC and you switch it down to run her on AC. And uh, this radio uses a different type of uh, circuitry that, or switching arrangement that uh, I'm trying to leave here. That basically you have a red wire here, power 2, and then over here you have another. Power connection right there in the center screen, power one. And uh, then it's just switched, switch over here. Uh, so basically, uh, however, this board is being switched when she powered up, um, these two red wires need to always be connected across the switch. Weird, I know, but. You'd think it'd just like take power from the power supply, run it over a switch, and then back to the main board. But no, that's not how it's working. Basically, how it works is that this wire here is always supplied with what with uh, voltage, and the one over here is what's switched. And so when you hit your switch here, it just continues with the circuit, with the voltage, and continues on with the board. Kind of weird. So basically, when I went over here and wired up my power and my switch to the fuse and everything, I um, had it in such a way that the switch is uh, on-off, center, center-off, and 
when I put the common, which I thought would be this one over here, the one over there, I ran the common, put her in the center position, and then I ran the um, my battery or external power to the top switch, to the top of the switch, and then the other wire would come off, I'd come underneath, and would hook up down below. But in any event, uh, so I turned it on, put the switch, turned it on, nothing, nobody home. So anyway, what I ended up having to do is exactly as I said, the red wire from your switch over here would have to come in over to here and it would have to be in series. In series. So basically, no matter what, these wires, this, this wire here and this wire here would be in the circuit switched by the main switch obviously and then the external power I just run it to the bottom and I just flick it up or flick this switch here up or down and it'll either put it on external DC or internal which is the wrong power supply so keep that in mind well, yes and I just noticed that even on external power that the noise still in the radio. So something else is going on here. So whatever it is it must be now uh, right now we basically got the whole power supply removed from the circuit. So <laughs> it's not the power supply that's causing the noise. It's something to do with the audio amplifier. It has to be a gap bag capacitor here somewhere. So, yeah. Only question is, which capacitor? I don't know. Could it be a bad voltage regulator? Bad capacitor? I think it's a bad capacitor myself. But anyway, I guess we'll soon find out. Anyways, so I'm going to call this part one. And then we're going to get into part two, which is trying to diagnose and locate that noise and see if we can't fix it. So anyway, boys, that's how you add a um, external DC power to the Cherokee CBS 1000 base station. Bit of work to it, but uh, it can certainly be done. Anyways, all the best, and look for part two soon. Work later.